Hello everybody, happy Thanksgiving. This is Jeff Hell from Comprehensive Outdoors and today we have an episode for you that is going to actually be um, kind of a mixture of a review of the Kill Shot 500 game hoist as well as uh, a little bit of footage from the Montana hunt. So um, if you wanna see the game hoist um, in use as well as hear a little bit about our hunt to Montana, then you can watch the whole thing. If you just wanna get to the pros and the cons of the um, Kill Shot 500 game hoist, just go ahead and scrub to the end of the video and that's where I talk about the pros and the cons and you actually get to see some up close footage of the game hoist. All right, hope you enjoy this episode. If you like, please subscribe. Mr. Corsetti, uh, Mr. Corsetti, we're, we are on our, this is our fifth year. So excited. I'm going to Montana and uh, Tell us a little bit, Jim. What part of Montana are we going to? We're going to eastern Montana. Eastern Montana. Okay. I, I I think that's all we'll say on that, right? Right. But we hunt some badlands. We hunt some uh, river bottoms. We hunt some uh, national forest and state lands uh, that are wooded. Um, no private land. We're not hunting any. We're not hunting any. Like we're not paying to hunt. This no. is all ac accessible to the common guy. No, just do it. Do it yourself. DIY hunting trip. It's our fifth year uh, going out to this particular region. And uh, I'm so excited, man. I'm so excited. Chance at big white tails, chance at uh, big mule deer. And that's what uh, I'll take either. All right. We'll be there in about, oh, another day and a half. We got another day and a half drive ahead of us. you can see it's pretty nasty out there uh, we got sleeting rain and snow I just went for a little bit of a walk couldn't go too far because of my foot but Jimmy's down down way down that trail he's about seven eighths of a mile away from where he shot a great big whitetail five years ago we nicknamed fang because when we had the European mount done on him on his top jaw he had a fang that little tiny one that wasn't part of his normal teeth that the taxidermist said that he's cleaned thousands and thousands, not clean, but he's done thousands of European mounts and he's never seen one with a fang. He's heard of it and it's a genetic uh, predisposition that certain bucks have. Jimmy's buck had it, so we called him Fang. Anyway, that's where Jimmy went, up into that nasty stuff. I don't know if you can see it out there, but it's, uh, it's cold, it's windy, and hopefully, Big deer's gonna come out. All right, I'll see ya. What? We got Jeff Hale here. <laughs> Comprehensive outdoors, man. Look what we got, guys. We got, he's he's wide. He's a nice four point with eye guards, not big eye guards, but, but and he's a little skinny, but man, I'm sure glad, thankful to have him, especially I have a hurt foot, and to get a shot, a close shot at 200 yards, had a deer like this, I was, I'm pretty happy. So let's hang him up. This hoist system, it's pretty amazing. It's a pretty amazing system. What I'm going to do is just pick up some of the slack here, make sure it rolls on correctly. And this is what you buy when you get to be an old man. Because as you get older, you get smarter. right there and then we'll lift them up as we go well that's where we're gonna start okay. all right there we go that's how slick that thing works maybe 20 minutes not bad there's the buck thank you sir all right for those of you that want to know this is the kill shot hoist Pretty slick. It is right there. I have to give it a big thumbs up. So 
So some of you might be wondering, how do I transport this thing, right? Because it's, <clears throat> it comes in two pieces. It's adjustable, it's heavy, it's long. As you can see, I just lay it in up against the side of my, in my pickup bed, up against the side of the wheel well over the top. And I just use bungees and I strap it in and it stays tucked in right up snug against the side. And uh, it doesn't take up much room. I still got plenty of room for my game cart, my ice chests. I mean, I've had this thing, the back of my pickup just packed full and that really doesn't take up much space at all. This will help you get a little bit better look. There's two pieces to this system. Here is the top piece with the winch, right? And this end, and this end fits over this bearing inside this cap. So you pull this cap off and that end fits right over it. This goes on the ground, on the floor, and this goes into your trailer hitch receiver. And man, it's pretty slick. Let me show you what we can do with it once we get it set up. Okay, so it's pretty easy to set up. This is the first thing you're gonna do. You're gonna stick it in your trailer hitch, right? And then put your cotter pin through. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna pull this pin out, drop it all the way to the ground, and don't just stick the pin in right there. Actually go up just a little bit more if you can, because once you get the weight of the animal on here, there's gonna be quite a bit of pressure pushing down. And so you wanna make sure that there's, this bottom piece is long enough so that there's not a gap um, between the plate and the floor once you put the weight of the animal on it. So I always try to push it to the next one up, make sure that's solid. And you can adjust it in various positions as far out from your pickup as you want. Okay, now, this thing here comes with a plastic cap on it. Um, it's, to me, the one flaw in the system is there's a bearing in here that you have to protect. And this plastic cap cracks pretty easy and it comes off. So I'm always ending up taping it on here. I have come up with another solution where I'm just going to take a neoprene um, booty or a piece of old neoprene off of a wader, fishing wader, and just put it right over the top of that. And that's what the bearing looks like under that cap. There's a closer look for you. Here's this racing. I'm going to pick this up. This fits right over the top. Now, this is where it gets good. If you want to, if you want to keep this from twisting, notice it twists, right? The great thing about this is when you have an animal on there and you're done skinning it, you can pop this, lower your tailgate, lower your tailgate, right? And imagine this is hoisted up here with the gambrel and you can just swing that animal right down here, unwind them and then push them back in on a tarp or whatever. Uh, it really saves your back. We've all, you know, one person grabs the front hooves, one person grabs the back hooves, you got a great big deer, you lift that thing up and you're trying to get it up, right? That's just a, that's just a hunt ruiner right there. You just, that's like, once you, you know, when you're young, that's one thing, but when you're late 40s, early 50s, you make a mistake when you twist, rest of your hunt is ruined, your back is out, right? So this is a great way to uh, save your back, or what if you're by yourself? I've had to skin a deer by myself before, hoist them up, hold this, swing them right in here, put them in the bed of the pickup. Here's the other beautiful thing about this, because it's adjustable and you can determine how far out this goes, usually when I start skinning an animal, usually when I start skinning an animal, I start from the back and I only want the deer probably probably about this high, right? And I'm gonna start on his legs and his hindquarters and I'm gonna get it down here. Now, instead of me having to squat down or stand on a ladder, I just go like this and I just raise him up. So once I'm ready, I just raise him up, right? Boom, lock it. Now I'm working my way down, working my way down, working my way down until I'm ready to take that buck all the way to the top. And now, the shoulders of that buck are down here. I can skin all the way down to the neck. And check this out. If I need to get up here high, I don't need to bring a step ladder anymore. I can stand right up here and comfortably have an elevated position from which to skin the deer. This is the Kill Shot 500 hoist. You can get them for about 200 bucks. I've seen them at Harbor Freight Tools. I've seen them at some other places, uh, but there are many different brands out there. I'm not necessarily promoting the Kill Shot 500, although I've had 
good luck with it. And the reason I got a 500 is <clears throat> I'm conservative, right? The kill shot 300 says, well, you can do deer up to 300 pounds. Well, I don't, I, I, I want to, I want to make sure this thing will handle it. So if I get a 250 pound deer, right, we've gotten some close, but not quite. This is going to handle it and I'm not have to worry about it. And if I got an elk, I'm probably not going to be able to put a whole elk on here, but I could probably do a half an elk, cut it in half with a saws, I'll put it up, skin it. There's different options you can do with this. And it is indeed very strong. So just to show you that this thing really is strong, I'm way overweight right now. My fighting weight's around 195 pounds. That's what I wish I was. But uh, with my hurt foot, I'm up to 218 pounds. So let's see how this thing holds. See if it buckles under 218 pounds. Ready? Here I go. I'm going to hang, lift my legs, and that's 218 pounds. No problem. Okay, so what's the final verdict on the Kill Shot 500 product? Well, let's talk about pros and cons. Pros, it's relatively inexpensive, $199. I was a little like concerned, but it's heavy gauge steel, it's well built, um, and it's heavy, and I'm glad that it's heavy actually. Um, <clears throat> some of you might say, well, a lightweight design would be better. Yeah, sure, but you're gonna pay for that if it was aluminum. Um, the other thing is, is it's portable, pretty easily portable. Comes apart in two pieces. You can you can shorten up the top and shorten up the bottom so that it fits in the back of your pickup. It's easy to store in your pickup. It's fast to get out and it's fast to deploy. It's a huge bonus if you're hunting in an area where there's no trees. I don't know about how many of you hunt mule deer, but you're hunting mule deer in big bad lands. You get an animal down, um, you can get it back to the truck, gut it or whatever, and now you have no place to hang it. Even if you bring back uh, parts of the animal uh, that you still need to hang or debone or whatever, this is gonna be a great tool to help you do it. It's not just for a whole animal. The other benefit is, is sometimes you need to skin a deer when you get back to, if you're staying at a motel or at camp or whatever, uh, or you need to process a deer to cut it up to put it inside a ice chest. Uh, you saw the footage back where we were at the motel where we were hunting and it was dark, right before dark, somebody shot one, threw it in the back of the pickup after they gutted it, came back, and they were able right there with the lights and everything to do the processing right at the back of the pickup. It's very convenient. Um, the only con that I can think of is that little plastic cap on top of the bearing. It broke and it's difficult to keep on there, so you have to use tape or something, so that's gonna require a solution. That could have been something uh, that the kill shot did a little bit better. And, um, you know, this is my second season with it, and so I've done about, between myself and my friends, we've probably done about eight deer on it. It's held up pretty well. It's not rusting. It's strong. So far, I'm really happy with it for the investment. If you are a person like me, who sometimes likes to hang their deer and skin it instead of being on the ground and skinning it or doing the gutless method, this is a great option to have in your pickup. You might not always use it, but it's nice to have it there. If you like this review, please click subscribe and please share this content. Thanks again. This is Jeff Hale from Comprehensive Outdoors. Have a great Thanksgiving.